Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. My name is David, this is David K Reacts, and today marks the second anniversary in three days. Uh, this isn't really an anniversary, but a year ago today I released the second video on my channel, which was Jeff Castellucci's cover of The Monster Mash, or rather my reaction and analysis to it. And so I thought it would be kind of hilarious. So I, I reacted to Ruffling Feathers by the Small Town Titans a little while ago, and I think probably because of the season and of um, the... Uh, uh, the fact that I just reacted to them, their version of the Monster Mash came up on my YouTube recommendations list. And my response to that was, yes, please. <laughs> a, I can't imagine another band I would rather hear cover this because I think they'll do something hilarious with it. And B, it seemed cute to re re react to this song a year to the day after the last time that I did. Um, Small Town Titans, obviously great band. I, I enjoy their work. This will be my third video covering... Third? Fourth? Third video covering their work. Um, I looked a little bit of information up about the Monster Mash. I don't remember whether I mentioned anything about this back in the day because it was video number two. I probably didn't. I don't think I was going into so much detail yet. I was still feeling my way. But uh, it was written by Bobby Pickett in 1962. That much I did know. But uh, what was interesting was apparently the way it came about, he was doing a performance of Little Darlin' one night and he did an, uh, a sort of spoof imitation of Boris Karloff in, it, in the middle of it. And the audience loved it so much, one of the band members said, hey, that was awesome. You should do something with this. And so the Monster Mash came into being. Apparently it was partially inspired by uh, a previous song of theirs, but also the Mashed Potato, which... I didn't realize it's a lyric in the contours, Do You Love Me? Uh, I can mash potato, I can do the twist. I never knew what that was all about until I looked it up recently and realized it's actually a dance. I had no idea the mashed potato was a dance, but it is. And uh, in the, um, uh, the Monster Mash video, I guess, or performance, they actually do use the footwork from the mashed potato, but with sort of Frankenstein's monster arms going on um so the, the the sort of torso and up is frankenstein and below the waist is the mashed potato which is kind of hilarious i didn't realize that's what was happening and i kind of love it even more because of it <laughs> so yeah fantastic song of course we all know charted at number one in the u.s it's still charting in 2021 i think it hit 29 in canada i think i read uh, i don't have the wikipedia page open anymore but Anyway, uh, yes, very cool song, very cool band. They have a tendency to do wacky stylistic things with things, which if you've seen there, you're a mean one, Mr. Grinch, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And given that they do that, I have a feeling this is going to be kind of amazing. Uh, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if this is your first time here. The way this is about to work is I'm going to watch the video straight through from beginning to end. I'm going to comment and emote over the top of that. And then I'm going to go back, watch it again. But this time I will pause, I will interrupt, and I will offer what commentary and analysis I feel I can based on the audio and the visuals that are apparent to me and also the foreknowledge gained from having watched it once already. Um, please do like this video if you enjoy it. Hit the subscribe button. Uh, it does you know, just sort of adds me to your channel, doesn't cost you anything, but it does amazing things for me. Uh, hit the notification bell, you can decide how often you're notified when I release a video. And if you'd care to, please do head over to buymeacoffee.com forward slash David K Reacts. If anybody has bought me a coffee so far this month, I apologize that I'm not thanking you in these videos. These are being recorded in the middle of September. I happened to have some free time, and that was what was going to enable me to do two videos a week, which, if all goes to plan, is what's currently happening. Uh, this week, of course, particularly special. It had three videos because I did the video on Monday, uh, the 16th of October, which was my one-year anniversary of the Reaction Channel. Um, but yes, uh, so if I will thank you in due course, but it will be uh, potentially a little while because I'm recording so far in advance. Uh, my daily life is bonkers, my job's fairly busy, and so one reaction a week is usually all I have time for. I just had time to do a few extra this time. So yes, without any further delay, I think we know we're in for a good time when this is the start screen of the video. Uh, <laughs> so this is Small Town Titan's take on the Monster Mash. I was working in the lab late one night when my eyes beheld and oh, the jigsaw ah. for my monster from his slab oh, Chucky. began to rise and suddenly and Pennywise, of course. Surprise, yes! This is great! The bedroom where the vampire speaks The ghouls all came from their humble abodes To get a joke from my electrodes 
<laughs> I like what he did with the rhythm there. This is great! The scene was rocking, all were taking the sounds. Go around chains back by the spaying hounds. The coffin beggars were about to arrive. With their vocal group, the cramped kick of five. They play the monster match. Oh, the lighting is so good. This is so amazing. It's so small town Titans. I love it. It really is. Oh. Yes, guitar solo. Apparently this was Ben's idea, the guitarist. Oh, the pumpkin. That's brilliant. Yes! If there's one thing I realized I've always wanted to hear Phil do, it's an evil laugh. That was great. Well played. Literally and figuratively. That's so good. Yes, apparently Ben came up with the idea according to the description. Um, and this is their version of the song. That's so good. That's so very them. I love the masks, the use of the masks in that. It must be challenging to play with those on, I would think, especially, I mean, you know, I guess you know your instrument well enough, you don't really uh, need too much uh, attention paid to it. But still, at the same time, you need to know what you're doing. Uh, I really <laughs> enjoyed that. And actually, the video is really good. So this is this is the closest I've really got to live performance so far um, with this, because my a lot of my analysis is very visually oriented. Um, when I did your mean one, Mr. Grinch, um, I realize that a lot of their stuff, they film kind of quasi music video. Like it's not them performing on stage in front of an audience. It's still got chosen camera angles, effects, all that sort of thing. And that's sort of what I, a lot of what I analyze while I'm breaking things down. So it's halfway to live, but not quite. So I, I'm still sort of comfortable talking about these. Um, I'm, I am going to experiment with live videos for those who've been asking. Uh, I'm just not quite, I, I still need to figure out quite how, what I'm going to, sort of talk about with those because uh, I can do vocal work um, and things like that but I don't really have the depth of knowledge that a lot of the sort of um, singing teacher and, and professional singer reactors have here um, and I feel like they do a better job of that than me so I'm just working out how my niche fits but anyway that's me rambling um, let's go back to the beginning of this and watch this again this is so good uh, and we'll see what we can pull out of it. I do, I love the fact that it's pop culture characters. They haven't just used sort of um, whatever mask. They've gone for, for uh, Chucky, Jigsaw, and uh, and Pennywise. Great choices. Yeah, I was working in the lab. Straight off the bat. I, I, cute uh, logo. Is that, is that something official or have they made their own? I can't remember the Monster Mash logos across the various different covers I've seen. Anyway, um... But I love in this, we hear Phil growling and screaming a little bit, but it's so much in the lower range. His lower range is wonderful. Um, check out my uh, You're a Mean One, Mr. Grinch 
reaction to hear that, I will put a link uh, right up here um, in the card. Go and check that out and you'll hear him doing some wonderful work there too. But to get it so consistently through this song, especially when I've just done Ruffle and Feathers, where he's right up, you know, at the top of his range screaming, now we're getting a totally different quality of sound. I like that. I was working in the lab late one night when my eyes began. The enunciation, late one night. He's hitting those T's so hard. And in that kind of tone of voice, it's making it so menacing. It's interesting. We get, with with sort of ghostly songs, you get a wide variety of styles put into spoken word and sort of singspiel, which is that sort of, um, like Rex Harrison in My Fair Lady, where it's sort of semi-singing, semi-speaking. You get a lot of different ways of tackling it. And that this is so good for Phil. That really hard enunciation that he's hitting right there it's so effective and i can't i can just never get over the variety in his voice it's astonishing i was working in the lab late one night when my eyes beheld an eerie sight for my monster from a slab <laughs> he's just <laughs> there's something comical to me about jigsaw the, like the puppet at any rate, just sitting there spinning a drumstick <laughs> while he's waiting to play. That's great. When my eyes beheld. Ah, that was what I was going to say. Very interesting harmony going on underneath in the sense that it's basically octaves. There's, no, there's not really anything filling in the gaps and Phil's kind of basically speaking this. So it's very bare and it's really effective. I was working in the lab late one night when my eyes beheld an eerie sight for my monster from his slab began to rise and suddenly to my surprise I love that sort of slightly cacophonous entry there where you get the, you get the, the guitar scrape uh this sounds like there's a vocal maybe they've double tracked phil for a second there or is that ben coming in Suddenly, to my surprise uh, to my surprise kind of going on in the background there on top of phil's sort of uh present vocal that we're seeing there i'm not sure if that's ben or if they've they've double tracked phil i don't know what what ben's full singing range is i don't know if i've ever heard it but uh, very effective entry for the band coming in there. Um, and I love that they go from sparsity to everything in two seconds flat, which for, a, uh, you know, this kind of really heavy sound is perfectly functional. It's great. I began to rise and suddenly to my surprise. Now, I know some people probably won't appreciate this because some, some folks just find it difficult to watch videos that have this kind of style of lighting and editing. For my part, I love what they've done here. This very, um, uh, it's kind of got that retro horror movie vibe about it where everything is in, you know, you've got colors going on here. There's obviously a fair amount of, of uh, sort of cold light in the room. The only real warm light that we're seeing is on this uh, sort of Ben's left leg, uh, the snare drum and the side of his face. Everything else is very, very cold. This I love the strip light down the bottom with the different colours on it. It's just kind of a little bit playful almost, which is so weird in this scenario and it's great. And then this string of cobweb everywhere. <laughs> it must have been a nightmare to clean this up when they were done, but it's so good. The cracks in the curtains even, it's a small thing, but just that slight... Uh, crack just at the top of the screen there where you get a little bit more light shining through and then that lovely blue color that we've got going on i was trying to figure out what this is i don't know if we get a good look at it uh over in the left hand side here um but just the visual presentation of this is spot on and then this light flicker that you've got the slight change in the film quality it's uh it's superb <laughs> Also, the camera is never still. It's moving all the time. And I love the fact that you've got this little bit of tilt and it's shifting very slightly. It's zooming in. Phil goes out of focus when we zoom right in on him and kind of comes back in again as the camera starts to pull back. The, it, it's so, it's adding to this, the, the sort of, um, the, this sort of, you, you get that sort of drunk fear feeling, if that makes any sense, where it's like everything, you, you get so afraid of something that things are starting to seem a little uh you know like you're uh, you're finding that your faculties aren't working quite the way they should do and you feel just a little bit drunk um 
because that's you know your brain flooding your body full of chemicals um i love that they've kind of gone for that look with the the what the camera is doing and how it's uh how you're seeing them through it you're not seeing them straight on you're seeing them in this weird endlessly shifting view and it's so effective <laughs> It's also, what's also nice is it's keeping the pace going. I just sort of clocked this. It's keeping the pace going of the thing without having to have like smash cuts every sort of two seconds. Um, we're able to stay on someone for a line and then cut to someone else because there's enough motion in the camera still that it you're not feeling tired by the, um, uh, the visual. Because uh, you don't want to stay on one shot for too long, especially in a video that's something quite fast paced and heavy. You want it to keep cutting and keep moving. Um, and I like what they're doing with this to kind of work around that. I love that pumpkin in the background, by the way. Pumpkins everywhere, it's great. So effective. Oh, I wanted to hit, ah, this was the line. I love that to get a jolt from he like pushes that forward and then then my electrodes he cut it's almost like he's winding down he pulls the time quite hard there and it's really really effective it's sort of uh, it's deliberate laziness I call it where you kind of get that um, something deliberately falls a little bit back from where it is either behind the beat or if you're already in front of it kind of falling back into place just shifting the time around a little bit and it's really really effective and i i just i love that that was phil's choice at that moment great i'm stopping all over the place in this one great guitar line there and every note where it where it's that da where it's going up we've got this chromatic climb and then it dips a little and climbs back up again and it's got this in this sort of sense of encroaching menace um like something's creeping up on you it's very cool <laughs> Interesting too, he did the mash is so far in the background that you're hearing it back here somewhere. It's not up front. And that, it, I will grant you what the, the narration at that point in time or, you know, what is the, the response to the he did the mash call is the more interesting part of the two. But the fact that we're barely hearing it is such an interesting decision as well. That's a really cool choice to put it so far back in the mix. <laughs> Oh, there it is in full force. Dr that Dracula and his son sound going on in the background on top of Phil. Uh, obviously some post-processing going on there. I'm guessing from the sort of tonality of the voice, I think they've double-tracked Phil and then played with the voice a bit. I don't think that's Ben. Um, again, could be wrong. Correct me if I am, please. Uh, but I love that. That's so effective. And the fact that the band cuts out and you just hear this sort of demonic voice in the background, oh, Dracula, and with that post-processing on it that makes it sound unearthly. Really great choice. Love that. Dracula and his son. I love that too. Dracula and his son. That sort of drop, that calm drop down into that. Phil's vocal decisions are fascinating. They're always interesting. He's always doing something cool with his voice, especially in a song. And I love, like bands like Small Town Titans taking on a song like this that is so full and dripping with theme. Seeing what they do with it, how they make it their own is never ceases to be amazing to me. And his son.
And now we go back into that octave thing again, except now we have Phil wailing all over the... I love it. <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> it's it, whatever it is. It's awesome, but it's just it's not quite what you'd expect. Somehow it works. Uh, I'm not quite sure why, but it does. I think maybe because it's playing with the camera so much as well. I think those two, it, the motion and the camera in concert, um, are actually very very effective. Uh, but I like this this pullback, and we get this very uh, kind of whaley sound, and then there's something else, and that. Ooh, that we just heard there again panning if you've got headphones on panning from right to left that's such an effective song uh, effective technique rather for any song that's got some kind of uh, halloween ghoulish vibe going on to it because that simple fact of sound moving around is inherently not what we expect and so it's kind of cool to hear that and it's something that you you really get with headphones because if I'm talking to you and I walk from one side to the other, sure, I'll sound slightly louder somewhere, but the reverberations in the room and everything like that, you're still going to hear me fairly well in both ears. And it won't have the same impact as that total shift that you get of hearing sound pan through headphones. It's really cool. I love how gentle Johnny's taking the drums here. He's not going too overboard. He's been solid throughout all of... I haven't really mentioned him that much because he's not really got a, a big show-off point in this, or at least he hasn't done yet. I don't think he does throughout the rest of it. We'll see. But uh, just this right now, this kind of laid-back ride and snare that's going on here, just pulled back a little bit so that we can go somewhere now. Oh, the Crypt Kickers, incidentally, was the credited name for the band that Bobby Pickett had when he recorded this. He credited them as the Crypt Kickers. Um, yeah, anyway. Oh, yes. No, Johnny gets this. I love this double kick here. And then no kick until two bars later. That's a great drum breakdown there. You get the and then you have this psh. The, the fractionally open hi-hat, just never closing, just being that constant, so it never quietens at all. By it, you, it's, its sound has probably only dropped by about a third the next time the stick hits it, and then the snare drum in there as well. And that as a build, like using that to push through this section into the next part, is brilliant. It's a really good sound for where they're going with this. And shook his fist and said, What happened to my friends in your face? Nice Tom Phil. And then again, that slightly open hi-hat. I hadn't clocked quite how prevalent it was in this, but it's a really good sound for this, just having that constant kind of crashing going on in the background. Really, really cool. Oh, these guys are so tight. <laughs> I do like that, dad, dad, dad. It's kind of giving me slight Phantom of the Opera vibes, but I'm okay with that. Um, the the sort of uh, creeping down chromatics going into the next uh, the next uh, sort of uh, main chord of the song, um, shifting around between there. Those little bits of motion. It's just nice to kind of be moving places. This is so good. I 
And it interests me so much that they go out on this. I didn't expect that, and it's kind of cool. I love that we get this really kind of heavy guitar part going on here that Ben's obviously having a whale of a time playing. Uh, and then it just fades into the patron thank yous and, and the sort of the fade out of the song. Uh, not what I expected, and I actually really enjoy it. And you can hear it uh, fill that. And uh, the sort of f floppy conducting that's going on as well. Oh, that is so satisfying. <laughs> That's really good. And then to go out on the evil laugh, of course, is is fantastic. Uh, that I really enjoyed. That, that's a great version of the song. They did a really good job of it. I love what they did with the video work. That's excellent. Um, I'm really impressed. I feel like that's... Uh, that's exactly what I expected was them taking a song, doing something that pays tribute, you know, quite faithfully to what the original is. Uh, but at the same time, going completely off the wall and doing their own thing and making it sound like them. Uh, it's a, a, a thing they do very, very well. And uh, I really, really enjoyed that. Thank you, YouTube, for spitting that up for me. I'm, uh, I'm glad that that came into my recommendations list and really enjoyed it. I hope you did too. Uh, whether you're, this is a first time hearing, the Titans, the, this song, uh, whether you're familiar with them, and, and uh, hopefully I was able to bring something to the table and you went, oh yeah, that is cool. Um, that's that's kind of what I strive for here, is just, I have this weird, if you've never seen my channel before, I have a channel intro video way back when, and I have this weird eclectic mix of things I've done uh, that I'm sort of employing in my reactions and analyses, where I've done a bit of video editing, a bit of sound editing, a bit of this, a bit of that, a bit of the other. And I just kind of pull out things I think are cool and hope somebody else does too. So hopefully there was something in there for you. And thank you uh, if you are still here watching all of this with me. I appreciate it very much. Please do like the video. Please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell if you'd like to be told, yes, I'm, you know, when I'm posting videos or if you don't want to be, that's fine too. Uh, and if you would like to, please do head over to buymeacoffee.com forward slash David K Reacts, where you can donate to support the channel if that's something that you would like to do. That's it for me for now. Another reaction video coming very shortly and uh, carrying on with Halloween month. Thank you very much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Have an absolutely wonderful rest of your night. Don't dance the Monster Mash or the Mashed Potato too much. Uh, save that for the 31st. <laughs> Take care for now and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.